Jefferson in theory versus Jefferson in practice, not always on the same page, uh, unfortunately, and again, particularly in ways that we're going to dive into further on the next episode. Um, but but since we're this this all kind of has a little bit of a, a defense aspect in it as well. Just one other point about Gallatin that you you highlight that I think is really interesting is the degree to which he he also had a, an understanding of the military industrial complex, you know, in, in, in an early sense. Um, where he, he he warns about the, the the way which defense spending creates a vested interest group, uh, and and obviously when we're seeing a rise, you know you, we have uh, not only at the end of the Adams administration do we have the tensions between France and England, um, but as you uh, men- mentioned briefly earlier, um, you the Barbary pi- pirates uh, hassling American ships, uh, f- fueling a military response which you highlight uh, Navy Secretary Robert Smith, who had a background in the shipping industry in particular, may have had a role in in really uh, uh, fattening uh, the the physical response uh, to uh, uh, the the Tripoli War and perhaps uh, an example right there in practice of Gallatin's concerns about vested interest groups in foreign policy. Yeah, absolutely. So there was this issue with the, the Barbary pirates, and this is a lot of mainstream historians. They say, well, this is our... The United States had to show with its, its supremacy on the on, 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 on the world stage. You had these clear what might be considered terrorists nowadays, um, or at least of like 10 years ago, they were uh, kidnapping American pirate, American uh, sailors, et cetera. This is in North Africa. This had to be stopped. So, you know, we had to send, uh, you know, the, the Navy. And in doing so, this is our first war. We showed that we were a government to be respected with. And, you know, yeah, you, you got to do all that stuff. And well, a lot of people, they forget that they don't talk about that, how people like John Adams uh, mentioned that actually they were looking for tribute in that while this tribute may or may not have been just, uh, I mean, it was it was unjust. They were basically looking for taxes, um, the, the Barbary pirates, is that it was going to cost less to pay them than to go fight them. Right. So from the phys- from the fiscal side, it's just, well, let's just let's just pay them off, basically, in that. Yeah, you know, instead of fighting them, uh, you know that 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 was probably the the the, the proper response to, to to do you know to do. But Jefferson didn't want to do that. He wanted he was he was against the Barbary pirates from the 1780s. An additional thing, and this is something I talk about in my book, is that he wanted to bring disgruntled Federalists into the Republican Party. And what better way of doing that than pleasing uh, the various naval interests who at the time were basically located in New England and in shipping centers like Baltimore, and they were overwhelmingly Federalist. And you look at Jefferson's various appointments related to the the Tripoli War, et cetera. And this is, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a clear instance of this and in that he's supporting this law. I mean, he's supporting this war partially as a way of pleasing the Federalists. And of course, when you look at America's wars, as I do throughout this book and as well as many other scholars have done, there's a lot of cronyism that goes into wars, that goes into the financing of the wars, that goes into who's going to be the contractors for said war, so on and so forth, and that this is clear and that there were various vested naval mercantile interests that were benefiting from this. This is uh, Albert Gallatin was against it. John Randolph was against it. Both of them were against the war. Unfortunately, they couldn't persuade Jefferson uh, to back off of sort of uh, his bellicose demands. Mm-hmm.